trying to figure out what to say about 2005. This is the moment where everyone said to me, hey, you just gotta skip the rest and start with 2005. So here I am. I started at 2005, finally, I'm there. I started this literally 11 months ago. Yeah, about 10, 11 months ago, January 10th. And here it is, November 7th. And I'm just like, so this is where everyone said to me, yeah, just skip the beginning. It took me nine months to get through that beginning that everyone kept saying you need to skip. So here I'm at 2005. It's taken me a long time to get here. And I'm sitting here. I, I had heard that everyone said he was a terrible Doctor Who. That's, this is what I've heard. I, I went in going, oh, Christopher Larkinson's terrible. You wait till you get to David Tennant and Matt Smith. Now, Matt Smith is the doctor I saw way back when and said, I love him. I don't know who he is, but I love him. Christopher Eccleston was simply astounding. Within one word, I went, it's the doctor. And, and that that's only happened three three times like fifth doctor did it seventh doctor did it eighth doctor nope eighth doctor didn't do it ninth doctor did it David Tennant did not do it actually I'm not liking David Tennant and it's taken me a while to warm up to him um he's he's great he's funny he's not the doctor Chris Fraggleston's the doctor watching going back and watching everything and then walking into Eccleston definitely different time and and this is there's this is something else there's definitely you can see that in the early and this is great because you get it now because a lot of you have watched 2005 you saw that very beginning and then you saw the, near the end of the arc how it got a little bit romantic between the doctor and Rose and in the middle they kind of started hinting at the relationship between the doctor and Rose okay the beginning part was dead on. That was Doctor Who. The, the weird plastic things coming out. Absolutely. The end of the earth. That is Doctor Who. That is absolutely. Him going, where do you want to go? I don't know. How about 10 years forward? 10 years back? Let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way forward. 10,000 years. We're going to watch your supernova. That is Doctor Who. That is the Doctor I know and love. Not really because that's the other thing. Let's talk about that for a moment. Where, 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 where did, I don't, I don't understand where it got wrong that suddenly the doctor can use the TARDIS the way he wants. Since when? Since when? In classic who? In retro who? The only one who could function that damn TARDIS were the Time Lords. Unless it, and I don't, I don't mean the doctor. The doctor had no clue. The TARDIS told the doctor where he was going to go. They never knew where they were going to end up or when. The TARDIS literally kind of wore the pants in that house. And the doctor kind of just went along for the ride because his girlfriend said so. And his girlfriend is the TARDIS. So the only ones who could even remotely control where and when the TARDIS goes were the Gallifrey and High Council who owned the TARDIS who had it stolen from them in the first place. So that being said, watching the doctor suddenly flip a switch and he can take that TARDIS any when, I'm going, since, since when? So aside from that little quirk, aside from that little, yeah, okay, suddenly you know how to use your own TARDIS, well, since when? That, that was really, that did not sit well with me, but okay, it was forgivable. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm going back over it, and it was, it was phenomenal. There was definitely a, finally, we're at 2005. And finally it began, and I sat down with my girlfriend, and we started comparing notes, and I'm like, okay, what's your thought of Doctor Who? And she's going, well, this is my opinion. What do you think of it? How does it compare? And one of the things that we really noticed right away was with those who started watching in 2005, it's all entertainment and mystery. For those who have seen everything prior, it's not a mystery. I have all the answers. I already know the doctor's past. My, my uh, girlfriend put it this way. She said, it feels like doctors, doctor uh, 2005 and on, it's all about the companions. And no, that's not true. That's not true at all. 
Um, she said, but, and she said, she hypothesized, so everything before then is about the doctor? And I'm going, no, it's always about the doctor. Absolutely. It might feel like the companions because, and this is what I realized, she feels like one of the companions who just, she felt like Rose, who just came on and went, I have no idea who you are. She is the companion. The companion who just came in in 2005 and hitched a ride with the doctor. You see, I hitched that same ride in 1963. I invisibly stepped into the doctor's TARDIS with Ian and Barbara, followed Susan and the doctor, and then I watched the doctor abandon his granddaughter on a Dalek-infested planet. I watched him fight Daleks and Zork or Zarbi. I saw him fight Cybermen and Yetis. And as he churned out companion after companion, picked up Jamie, had Jamie taken away from him, changed face, regenerated, found Sarah Jane, lost Sarah Jane, found Leela, made canine, built another canine, built another canine. I was there for all of it. So that every time he brought in a new companion, the companion was sitting there going, oh, well, it's, it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. How do you get the outside around the inside? I'm right there with the doctor going, you're such a noob. So 2005 rolls around and I watch America in this younger generation step into the TARDIS for the first time alongside Rose. Now this doctor has this massive history, one that I've already seen, one that I have already indulged in. He is the president of Gallifrey. That's what I know. There are three, three canines, not one. And I know exactly where each and every one of them are. I know where he picked up the first one. I know all of his companions, many of them I wish I could forget. I miss, I miss Sarah Jane and Leela. I miss Jamie, I miss Zoe. So walking into the 2005 Doctor, for me, the first thing I noticed was what the hell happened in the last 200 years. Because when I left off with my doctor, he was 750 years old. Now he's telling everyone he's 948. Where has he been for 200 years? That, that, that does not rub me the right way. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, that really does not sit well with me. There are 200 years of the doctor's life that are missing. Now, 200 years, if you just came in with 2005, 200 years, it's, it's no different than all of his previous life. This is year one for you. But for me, it's, well, I came in at age 700, and I was with him all the way to 748, and now he's gone for 200 years? Now, my question this whole time was, what happened before he stole that top? Why did he steal the TARDIS? How did he get to the TARDIS? Where did he go to college? I know where he went to college. I know his nickname in college. <laughs> Theta Sigma is the doctor's name. One of them anyway. That was, I'm never going to forget Baker's, Tom Baker's face when his classmate comes in, Theta. And Tom's like, do I know you? And he goes, Theta Sigma. And the doctor's just like, I know you. How do you know me? Theta Sigma class of, and he gave him the class, and he goes, I know you! Theta Sigma! Call me the doctor now. <laughs> that was just, it was, the doctor was married. The doctor had a daughter. The doctor had a daughter who had a granddaughter named, or who had a daughter named Susan. Susan traveled with the doctor, and when he stole the TARDIS, he took Susan with him. Why? We don't know. I was there the first time he realized, oh crap! Camouflage unit is broken on the TARDIS. Well, it's going to be a police box for a while. I was there when he realized, ah, crap, it's not working. We've been in England too long. Literally, that is what he said. We have been in England too long. <laughs> the TARDIS doesn't work anymore. And then he couldn't control it. I was there with the sixth doctor when he fixed it. And then removed it because he decided he didn't like it. <laughs> it. There was a massive history there. So walking into 2005, while my girlfriend is explaining the experiences, well, I'm one of the companions, 
I see what the companions see, and I'm learning about that, the doctor, as they're learning about it. I'm going, oh no, I'm the doctor. I've, I've been there with the doctor. I've been there with the TARDIS. I know what the doctor knows. I'm once again hearing the eight millionth person going, oh my God, it's bigger on the inside than the outside. And it's, it is truly a different experience coming in this way. Is it worth watching? Yes. Can you get by without it? No, you can't. You're going to be lost. You're going to be confused. You're going to be very, very, very... You're going to look like this a lot. And every now and then you're going to stop to laugh. The best example I can give regarding this would be the Daleks. I knew that the Dalek was going to be there. When they saw... When they were in the museum. And he's like, oh, it's an alien museum. And he starts walking through that. I just stiffened right up and I'm like, there's a Dalek in there. Anytime there is an alien museum, there's going to be a Dalek. And he looks right in the face of a Cyberman. And I went, is it alive? Because I know what the Cybermen are. The, the companion is sitting there right there with everyone else who started watching in 2005 going, what's a Cyberman? Is it harmful? Yes, it's harmful. See, I'm right there with the doctor going, holy shit, it's the Cybermen. I'm, where's the Ice Warriors? Like, I started looking for them. And I'm like, where's the Daleks? When I didn't see the Daleks, Oh, and I saw the Yeti, and I'm like, oh my god! So, it's all there. It's all there. So they said they had one alive. And the way they led right into it, I'm like, oh no, they've got a Dalek! They've got a Dalek! So I'm like, tweaking. Okay, I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking! Okay, before I tweaked, let's go back to the first episode. So Christopher Eccleston gets there, he does my whole little, grabs her by the hand and goes, run! And I went, yeah, he's the doctor! So that clearly came through. Like, within seconds, that's the doctor. No questions asked. Christopher Lackleston nailed the role. So he takes it to the end of the earth. And they're looking upon the sun. And the, the uh, tree people are sitting there talking to him. I have seen that doctor laugh. I have seen him get angry. I have seen him standing there with his finger on a button, debating on whether or not he should destroy the entire race of Daleks and I have seen him decide not to. I have seen him watch his people die, watch them get lost. I have seen a lot with that doctor. I have seen him work on cars. I have never seen him cry until that moment. When they started, when she started talking to him and she's like, I know what you are. You're a time lord. And when I think about what happened to your people, and I went, what happened to his people? No, it was even before that. It was before that. It was when Rose asked where he came from, and I just went, he came from Gallifrey. And he wouldn't answer her, and I went, why wouldn't he answer her? And this is really, this is something I was talking to my girlfriend about. She said, yeah, and I just figured he, was, he didn't want to talk about it. And I'm like, the doctor talks about Gallifrey. The doctor never shuts up about Gallifrey. The doctor talks a mile a minute about Gallifrey. The doctor loves Gallifrey. Like, oh good God, you hear about Gallifrey in almost every single arc. Well, who are you? I'm the doctor. Doctor who? Exactly. I'm the doctor. Just doctor of Gallifrey. That, that is what I'm from Gallifrey. Do you, have you heard of it? No, exactly. It's, it's, um, well, it's a might, you know, it's around the corner here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The village on the road to Gallifrey. Oh, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, there, there, a lot of that goes on. So, for him to suddenly get really upset at the mention of where are you from, that was a huge red flag. That was like, what happened to him? I looked at my husband and I'm like, something happened to him. He does not, not talk about Gallifrey. So, when this woman comes on, the tree people, and she's talking to him, and she's like, you're a time lord. And she says, I am so sorry to have lost everybody, to have your planet destroyed. And I just went, planet destroyed? What? And he looks up and there's a tear on his face. And I'm like, wait a minute. Leela was there. K9 was there. What about Romana? And I just started going through all the faces that I know, all the people. The whole history of Gallifrey. I saw it. I was there. I was there with the freaking doctor every time he... I was there with, with Patrick 
when the Time Lords chased him down. Run! And, and he tried to make a run for it, and they pulled him back after they screwed with him a little bit. I was there for that. And I saw these people. I saw them try him, and I saw them try him again. And I saw them call him in to say, you know, we have a rogue. We need a rogue to handle the rogue. Go get the master. I was there for it all. I knew the faces and the names of the people who died. So to hear that this planet was gone, I, it, it was easily 24 hours just shock. And then, and then for them to, in, in the next arc, for um, him to bring on this Dalek. Well, I had no doubt, absolutely no doubt. Th that night I was talking to my husband about it and I'm like, no, the Daleks did it. He's like, well, why do you say the Dalek? Because no one would have been that cruel. Because no one would be so disgusting. The Borg would do something like that, but the Borg are better than Daleks. The Borg would do it. No, the Daleks would, absolutely. The Daleks would, wouldn't hesitate to destroy a single planet in one go. The Cybermen would not do that. The Ice Warriors would not do that. The Cerulians would not do that. Oh, but the Daleks would. So yeah, I had no question that it was the Daleks, which got me thinking, excuse me, which got me thinking, well, it was probably a we're here for the doctor or we're going to make sure you never bother us again. Maybe it was vengeance. Maybe it was a, hey, if one doctor can do this, let's see what his whole planet can do. Let's take out the Time Lords because we can't even handle one Time Lord. So when he got down there and he flicked the light on and he saw the Dalek, yeah, I was right there laughing at that damn Dalek in the face. I don't know, the way he was clawing at the walls. Oh, I got it. I, I got all of that. It wasn't interesting. There was no mystery. It was a sequel I was watching. It was probably part 10 of a show I've already seen. I was just watching the next section of it. I already had the history. I already knew everything that was going on. And I'm just like... What the hardest part of that episode was watching the Dalek go, I am alone. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you're alone. And then he looks at the doctor and says, you're alone? And the doctor's like, yeah, I'm alone. And then he goes, we are the same. And I'm just like, oh no, you are not the same. And then they started torturing the Dalek. And that was weird. You have no idea what it feels like to have such compassion for something that you want dead. That was weird. I absolutely wanted the Dalek to die. I did not want it to suffer. That was bizarre. It was very confusing. Very, very confusing. The impact is what get lost. The impact. To sit there and watch 53 years of the Doctor versus the Daleks. And then to see one more showdown, one more face-off. You're missing those 53 years if you start with 2005. You can't possibly understand the evil of the Daleks. My daughter did it and said it best. She's 13. She started watching from 2005 and on. And I'm not happy about that. I did not approve that. Um, she watched the episode with all the Daleks coming in. This is... Uh, can't even remember which one this was. This was at the end of Christopher Eccleston's. Actually, it was the fi finale of Christopher Eccleston's performance. And there's like thousands, millions of Daleks all over the place going exterminate. And my daughter's just taking all this in and she's, she's just, whoa, that's so cool. And my husband and I are just like, terrifying. Not cool. Terrifying. I've seen what they can do. I've seen what they think. I've seen Davros. No, they no, not cool. And it's I remember I remember thinking that when I first saw the Dalek, I was like, really, that thing? And I remembered that shape and that body and it's really what how can they? But then 
<clears throat> then you watch them using human beings to mine radiation out of the earth. Then you think differently on the Daleks. When you see them literally cram people down a hole. Then you think differently on the Daleks. And you see each and every one of them never once question whether or not they should kill. They just do it because that's an order. Because they obey. Yeah, the Daleks have got to be one of the most horrific things in the universe. An obedient mind. So yeah, yeah, the Daleks, it, it goes from being, okay, so it's the evil science fiction guy, to, oh no, they truly are horrifically evil. And I remember the first time the doctor mentioned the evil of the Daleks. Second generation, it was when Patrick Troughton was confessing or giving his claim to the Gallifrey and High Council as to why he deserved to medal and he was going over all the things and all the evils he had stopped including quote the evil of the Daleks and I remember then thinking really the little creatures crammed in boxes how do they get upstairs <laughs> no Christopher Eccleston was a phenomenal performance phenomenal and I will say I'm thrilled that Rose's relationship with him slowly developed. So it, it almost like it reflected my hesitation, like really, it's the doctor. And that was definite like right in the very beginning of she, he's like 900 years old, that's gross. And then slowly she's kind of like, okay, I might like him. But the fact that this was even a topic in Doctor Who was still pretty weird. Very, very weird. Like I said, there's just no, and let's, no, that's, that's later. I was going to talk about Sarah Jane, but that's David Tennant. Because um, when Sarah Jane came in, oh, I spent the whole episode crying. Just crying. Yelling at the doctor to hug her because it's Sarah Jane. And then to hear her arguing with Rose over the doctor. And I'm just like, I was there with Sarah Jane. And by the way, I just need to clarify. Yes, Sarah Jane was there with John Bertree, Third Regeneration, and she was there for a long time. Probably, I think she was the longest running companion, aside from Jamie. She was there for almost all of John Bertree's existence. She was a reporter who meddled, <laughs> sound familiar? And she went into unit without permission, and the brigadier hooked her up. Now, before Sarah Jane, there was another woman, Lisa. Oh, God, I hated her. I hated her. Um, she was there for maybe an arc. And they brought in Sarah Jane to relieve her. Sarah Jane was wonderful. And it's funny because the doctor got attached to her, to the uh, to Lisa. And then they dismissed her and brought in Sarah Jane. And she's like, he's like, well, where's the other girl? I just got used to her. Yeah, I'm Sarah Jane. She was nosy and didn't listen and everything the doctor needed. But there was no romantic interest. I'm telling you that right now. There was no romantic interest. And here's something else. She wanted to go home. Let's go back to that. She whined and complained about wanting to go home. He said, okay. And I think he took her home. There was an adventure there and she went back and she's like, no, I'm staying with you. So then they went all over time again together and they had a whole nother five other adventures together. And then she's like, doctor. Oh, that was great. I want to go home. Doctor. She packed her bags. She was ready to go. And without realizing he had been listening, he took her home. And she got there and he's like, well, here you are. And she's like, well, how about goodbye? And he goes, oh, Sarah Jane, you know I don't do goodbyes very well. So she, she left, she had her bags, and I swear, I don't remember Canine with her. I am certain Canine did not go with her. I'm very certain of this, but okay. In the five doctors, she comes back with John Petui and Bessie. Bessie is the doctor's car. Bessie is awesome. And, yeah, it, it just, no, there was no romantic interest with the, with the doctor. So to hear Sarah Jane arguing with Rose about their romantic interest, I'm like, they didn't have that kind of relationship, trust me. Like I said, there was no sexual anything until Perry 
supposedly stepped on the doctor's pocket watch. So, Christopher Eccleston was a phenomenal, phenomenal performance. It, just wonderful. Definitely Doctor 2, Doctor 3, Doctor 4. Absolutely. In that order. Yeah, absolutely in that order. Doctor 2, Doctor 4, and Doctor 3. Just phenomenal, phenomenal performance. Um, I would easily put him in there with Tom Baker. Absolutely. Just wonderful performance. I think that's why I'm having such an issue with David Tennant. It's because after watching Christopher Eccleston and everybody else getting to David, it's like... It's not the doctor. It is not the doctor. We will see. I'm. It's just very weird. Very weird. So, all right then. <laughs>